It's Noelle and today I'm going to be wrapping up my books that I read for March and then I'm also going to share my TBR for April. I can't believe it's already April. March flew by. I'm not so excited for summer. I like the cold a lot more. So for my March wrap up, I ended up picking a lot of books out of random on my bookshelf. I don't really like to film a lot of TBR videos, which means to be read videos because since I'm a mood reader, I just totally pick whatever, you know, I usually just change my mind on what books I decide to read. So I can make a list of a TBR that I want to read for, say, March, but I'll totally read five separate books that have nothing to do with it. I, I don't know why my mind works that way, but yeah, I ended up picking up the Shadowhunter series. So I did read the Clockwork Angel. Um, I finished it. I gave it like a four star. How do I explain this one? It was, it was good. It was good. It wasn't um, like as amazing as I feel like the hype kind of around it had my expectations really high, but I, di I did like it. There was a lot of like 200 pages worth of, it was kind of, I wouldn't call it dragging, but it was just slower paced. And that's obviously because of the character development. So I understand, but yeah, I give it, it's, it's a solid four for me. I had a good time, no regrets. Definitely going to finish, continue reading though, because I did like it. So I am starting the Clockwork, what is it, Prince next? Yeah, I'm not sure if this one, if I'm going to like this one more than the first one, but we'll see. And I heard it has a love triangle, that's all I about no, I kind of wish I didn't know that, but I've been living under a rock and I just now <laughs> discovered the Shadowhunter series by Cassandra Clare, so yeah, it's my fault, I'm just now reading, <laughs> just now reading them. But actually, I enjoy picking up the mangas for the Infernal Devices, which is the Shadowhunter series. I ended up reading the first one right after I read the first one of The Clockwork Angel. And I actually had more fun reading the manga a lot more. So I might just continue on with the manga. So you'll have Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess. And yeah, there were just a lot of, oops, they were just a lot of fun to read. And I think I had more fun reading these than obviously I did just the novel, but it could just be my mood. I don't know, but I feel like I'm double whamming it, double reading it. But yeah, I did enjoy these. I'm really glad I picked them up. And because I like them so much, I also picked up the four Mortal Instruments volumes. So these apparently in the chronological order of reading all of Cassandra Clare's novels, the Mortal, Inst the mortal <laughs> Instruments come first. And I don't really feel like reading all those novels all the way through, and I know that's silly to say, but I felt like, okay, if I read them, these graphic novels, maybe I will like them more and still get that Mortal Instruments story that I'm missing, missing out on. Yes, I know I'm missing out on them, but it's okay. I just... I'm just worried that the Mortal Instrument novels would be to, I think, young adult. I'm just worried they'll be a bit too of a young audience for me. Like, I'm fine reading um, young adult fantasy, but if it's geared toward a little bit of a younger audience, I tend to not go for it too much, which is kind of hard to say because I do like middle grade, but I don't read it as much. But when I do, I do enjoy it. But I don't know. I'm just not in the mood. <laughs> I'm excited to pick these up. Um, I'll probably read them after the Infernal devices, graphic novels. So yeah. So after wrapping up the Shadowhunter series, I delve into one of my favorite books this year. I'm not kidding. I'm putting it on my favorites list. On the reads, I rated it so high. I think it just took me by surprise and 
it wasn't what I expected. I thought it would be a lot more darker, but I ended up picking up The Lost Apothecary and by Sarah Pinner. And I'm so glad I picked this one up because this one wasn't as dark as I thought it would be. Because it's about women in the 17th century, I believe in London, that have like this secrecy shop where they sell these potions with poison, different types of poison in them, to, and they sell them to these women who want to secretly murder someone, whether that's they despise, could be in their family, could be in their friend group. The shop doesn't want the details. It's more of, it has one rule where it's there to help women, so they only target men. You're not allowed to use the potions to harm any women, and that's their theory behind doing good. And it gets a lot more interesting because it gets a little more complicated with that, um, especially with you know, these customers coming in, you know, their stories are not always adding up or there's a little bit more to the story that they find out later where it get yeah, it gets a lot more complicated. I don't wanna spoil too much, but I, I loved it. It was such a great read. It, it was pretty short and I almost wanted more because it was just, I just dived into it. And like I said, it's not as dark as I thought. I know it has the topic of murder and, you know, poison, but it kind of gave me a Halloween vibe rather than a like thriller vibe. It was definitely more a witchy potions, alchemy, apothecary vibe rather than a murderous thriller. It, it wasn't even spooky. I wouldn't call this spooky. It's, it's kind of hard to describe, but it basically starts off with a flashback and your, and also the present of this woman who she finds this potion, empty potion bottle and she wants to know the history behind it so she's willing to do whatever she can to delve into figure out where this potion bottle is from and she's also having trouble in her present life as well and then it has flashbacks every other chapter where it shows the 17th century and the secrecy shop and what really goes on behind there and kind of how it came to be and yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed it the story most because I love when there's an, an apprentice element and at the shop there's, I don't want to call like this sorcerer because it's not sorcery in the apprentice. It's more, yeah, it's kind of, it's kinda, I don't want to give too much away. Oh, it's hard to describe, but it's, it's pretty entertaining. I really liked it. I gave this five out of five stars. Definitely would recommend it, especially around the Halloween time, but honestly, you could just pick it up now. I really enjoyed it. It's, I think the writing is amazing. Obviously, that's why I enjoyed it so much. I didn't get bored. I didn't feel like it was dragging. I didn't feel like there was any slow points. You know, each chapter has a significant role it plays, so you're not just getting all these useless details. I just love when the author just doesn't go on this writing spiel of all these extra details to the story. I didn't feel like that had this at all. I felt like it, since it was so short, it really just captivates you, keeps you entertained, and I just really recommend picking it up. I hope I did it justice. Pick it up for sure. And then my very, very favorite read that I picked up is The Snow Child. This is such a gem. This is, I mean, obviously I know why it won the Pulberry Prize now, because it, it keeps you thinking and just pondering on it after you finish reading this story and it's such a gem and it, and it has to do with this couple who sadly has um, been unable to conceive a child and they have no children and they're kind of, I wouldn't say envious of other people, they're more saddened by the fact that they can't have children like their neighbors do or like the people in their community but basically they live in Alaska in this super super small village in 1920 where they want to try and build their own life kind of midway through their life and you know they are having kind of a hard time being all alone in Alaska as a couple and not having many people to talk to and it talks about kind of the struggles behind that, but it's it gets super, super entertaining when they think they see a child running around and negative 
freezing degree weather and this Alaskan storm and they couldn't believe their eyes when they see it. They think they're going crazy and maybe they have cabin fever. But that's where the story starts off and it's I don't want to say any more because this was not what I expected but better. It had that winter Alaskan feel, put you in the ambiance and the scenery and you feel like you're right there with them and they even talk about food, you always have these pies, cherry pies, and it just, I feel like you could smell the, the fireplace and the log cabin you're in. It's just such great writing, but also it has this little whimsical, magical feel to it because is it real what they're seeing? Is it, is it really a child in the forest? I don't know, you, gotta, you have to read it. I love this, love, love, love this story. I would say it is slower paced because you're, you're really focusing on the characters and their struggles and their backstory a little bit, but you cannot put it down. At least I couldn't put it down. I, I will praise this story until the end of time. I would say 100% read this if you're looking for the perfect winter read that just touches your heart. Like, this touches your heart just like The House in the Cerulean Sea does, I believe. So if you like that story, I feel like you will love this story too. Just so, oh man, like I I want to reread it again. And I usually don't feel that way about stories very often. So when I want to reread it, that's like a sign to me that it really hit me in the right spot. And I think the ending, it has a little bit of a twist and it just, oh, you just can't stop thinking about it. They're 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 pretty dang good, so yeah. Also, in the month of March, I also finished reading what came in a owl crate box, which is Sweet and Bitter Magic. I would describe this as really, really, really cute, whimsical, definitely has that middle grade feel. So for people who love middle grade, you will love, love this, even though it is considered YA, which is young adult. I felt like it had that middle grade vibe to it, only because the story was so simple and the ending was kind of cheesy in my opinion, but it by no means was bad. It's just, yeah, I would, I would categorize it in the middle grade young adult section for sure. But it has a super strong start. It just kind of had like a slow finish and I did feel like it was dragging a little bit um, toward the end. And I gave this, did I give it 3.5 or 3 star? I think I gave it 3.5. And that's just because, like I said, it's a bit, a bit, it's a bit for the younger audience. And the ending I didn't like so much. The ending was a little bit, well, very predictable, not a little bit, very predictable. There was a twist in this though, so I did not see the twist coming. I did enjoy that, so that's what I did enjoy. And I loved the beginning and the aspect of a witch and a girl who possibly might possess magic, might not. And I don't want to spoil too much because like I said, the beginning was my favorite part. It really was a strong, strong start and I really, really, really enjoyed this beginning of this story. I just didn't, I felt like I was kind of like scanning through toward the end. I was kind of like, okay, like what's going to happen kind of feel, but in the sense of it was kind of dragging. So I was kind of like not so much interested in what was going to happen at the end. And I think that's where it kind of fell through for me. But like I said, give it 3.5, I believe, or three. And Definitely for those who love middle grade, you will love, love, love this, especially for sure. Now, also in the same category as young adult and middle grade vibes was The Wide Starlight. So this is a brand new release and I read about it online, so I anticipated, you know, I was very anticipating the release, very excited for it. So I got it the day it released and I love the synopsis and let me just tell you what it's about. It's about 16 year old Ellie. She was there 10 years ago on a frozen forge in Norway, the night her mother whistled at the lights and then vanished. Now Ellie lives an ordinary life with her dad on Cape Cod, but when the northern lights are visible over Cape Cod just for one more night, she can't resist the possibility of seeing her mother again. I also like the back where it says the northern lights filled the sky so completely that no black was visible, no star, no moon. A million dazzling shades of emeralds and swirling so slowly that it felt like earth was moving while they, while they stood still. 
I mean, the cover just says that as well. Just, it's beautiful. This cover, I mean, gorgeous. Love, love, love this cover so much. This one also was, I would consider this more middle grade. And because of that, also the author, she is known for writing other middle grade novels. So I feel like this was her first YA, I think. I think I read, it, I read that online. That was her like first young adult novel she wrote. And... The story was really cutesy, so I would say if you want a really, really cutesy version that has to do with Northern Lights, has some whimsical, magical sprinkles in there, it does have to do with the depression and grieving and loss as well, and yeah, I mean, like I said, there wasn't anything that blew me away, but it was cute. I gave it a three star. Yeah, it wasn't my very favorite, but I guess if you want like a polar read for the winter season, you can add this one to your list, but just know it is for a younger audience. I also wrapped up another winter read because I was just in that winter feel and I like the cold and it's becoming hot outside and I don't want it to be hot. I want it to remain cold because I really like the cold weather, so I started picking up all these wintry reads and I picked up Below, which I didn't really hear about until I looked on Amazon and under Amazon Books and this was on one of the ads that I was looking through and I was like, below, what does that have to do with? And this one was not what I thought it was after reading the synopsis because it doesn't really give too much away about the book and yeah, it's, it's pretty... It has to do with Inuit mythology, and I know nothing about any of the backstory or history behind that, so I was really, you know, really interested in reading about it, so I picked it up, and this, okay, this is going to sound really, really random, but this reminds me of Avatar The Last Airbender and Pokemon Into the Unknown, I think it was called that movie when I watched when I was little. I think Pokemon Into the Unknown. I'll put a picture. And the reason is because this story just had those, I felt like just those characters just thrown in here. Um, especially in the Pokemon movie where the young girl um, Into the Un I think it was called, yeah, like I said, Into the Unknown because the unknown Pokemon, anyway. The younger girl was the princess and ruler over this magical cursed land that was also. I think believe made of snow or ice and yeah she just wanted to play and she had no idea what she was bringing upon other people anyway it's I'm not gonna sum up the Pokemon movie but and also the last airbender also had a face stealer kind of story to it and I felt like she mixed those and put them in here which isn't a bad thing I just definitely reminded me of those two movies which sounds really really random and yeah it has to do with this girl also lives among the harsh weather of the ice and the snow and one day her sister gets captured and they find her with no face at all so she has her body but she has no eyes or mouth and it was a lot darker than i thought this is a really really dark i wouldn't call it grim but i would say it's very dark winter reads i mean it was kind of weird imagining people without a face and they can't speak or anything all they can do is breathe and yeah, there's this villain who's a face stealer who steals people's faces and you don't know why, but this girl, like I said, her sister got her face stolen, so she's like, I'm going to find my sister's face and put it into this demon or villain who is just stealing people's faces and never giving them back, so these people just live this horrible life with no face. So she goes on this quest and it gets really freaky. <laughs> Uh, at least in my opinion, kind of weird because she meets the villain and it's not who you think. And yeah, like I said, it reminds me of the Pokemon movie. But yeah, I gave this one a three star. It didn't blow me away. It was kind of weird and bizarre, really random, but a dark read that, yeah, it's, this one's just hard to sum up because also I really did like the Anut mythology aspect behind it too. That was pretty cool. And yeah, this one, like I said, it's just really hard to explain this one, but yeah, read the synopsis and it interests you, go for it. Now, what took up most of my time during March, and by most, I mean this took me weeks.
to get through. And I was kind of glad I finished it, which is A Court of Silver Flames. I loved the beginning of this. I loved all the way, halfway through. It's just, it's just chunky. And I just, yeah, this one just took me a while to get through. I felt like you could have cut out like 200, 300 pages of the story out of the book because it, it wasn't repetitive. It was just so long. <laughs> And I love the characters so much. I really do. Like I said, when I first picked it up, I was blown away. Like, this book did blow me away in the beginning. And then it just kept kind of, I felt like dragging a little bit. And I was just like, okay, when are things gonna, you know, switch or take a turn? And I couldn't even tell what was gonna happen because it felt like nothing was kind of being set up to happen. So I was like, where? Where is Sarah J. Mass going with this? I don't know. I did like the ending though. Was it worth the extra, like, 700 pages? I don't know. I don't know. I gave it a three star. But I enjoyed it, of course. Whoever are a Kotar or a Court of Thorns and Roses series fans, you will, you will, love, you will love this. Like, it, by no means is it a not a great book. I actually liked this one more than I liked the third one, which was A Court of Wings and Ruins. I did like this one more, and definitely... The, more than the Court of Frost and Starlight. I This one was far better than those, in my opinion. So it was probably my third favorite in the series. I just, ooh, it took me a while. I kept putting it and picking it up, putting it down, picking it up, and yeah, it took a while. So thanks, Sarah J. Mass, for that. <laughs> and yes, I have another book. I was flying through these books in March, and I picked up Fury Born. This one is really, 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 really good. So, starts off for, as a five star for me because I haven't read anything quite like it. It has, it has angels and demons in it, but it also has this magical sorcerer feel in it. And there's trials and quests and it has to do with kind of a flashback and also you're dealing with... Um, um, a girl in the present, which kind of gets confusing at the beginning. I was kind of like, okay, focusing on the queen in the flashback, and then they fast forward to her granddaughter, which is the girl you're following, and the present, and you're kind of going back and forth each chapter, so it did get a little bit, I wouldn't say confusing, it just kind of get a little bit frustrated because you're kind of like, okay, I have to remember what happened in the chapter before, okay, what happened in that chapter, in the last one, okay, it was kind of like, if the writing wasn't bad, it was just a little bit, it was kind of hard to just flow, if that makes sense. Like, this book doesn't flow quite like the other reads I read, but I do love the story. I, yeah, it starts off really, really, really strong, and I'm loving the characters already. I love the romance already in here. There's just nothing quite like this story. I'm really liking it, so I picked up, since I haven't finished it, I almost have, like, I think close to like 60 pages left of this one. I also picked up part of the series, which are these two to read, and I believe King's Bane's next in the Lightbringer, and so, yeah, I am excited to see where the series goes, and I heard people love the last one, so I gotta start and get to the last one, but yeah, so far, 4.55, like, it's up there, it's pretty good. It's, it's so different. It's very different than any of the books I read. And one of the stories I did read, I did DNF, which means do not finish, and I DNF'd Once Upon a River. This one was just not for me. I... This one's hard to explain, too. It doesn't have to do with the story or the writing. I just... Just not vibing with this book. I just wasn't connecting with any of the characters. I didn't really care about the mystery. Like whether it's a murder mystery or just something else that's really going on. I just, I didn't really care for it. So I didn't really get too far in it because I just didn't feel invested or interested in it. None of the characters connected with me. But I've heard people, some of, some people love it. Some people do. So I just didn't want to force myself to read it if I wasn't enjoying it because I do have other books I really, really want to get to. It starts off really interesting. So. Let's see how they say it. Um, it starts off, 
On a dark midwinter's night in an ancient inn on the river Thames, an, an extraordinary event takes place. The regulars are telling stories while away in the dark hours when a door bursts open and a grievously wounded stranger walks in. In his arms is the body of a small child. Hours later, the girl stirs, takes a breath, and returns to life. Is it a miracle? Is it magic? Or is there another explanation? These these questions have many answers, and some of them quite dark indeed. Yeah, that kind of that's kind of how it like starts off. So you're kind of wondering, okay, how did this girl turn up? The man who brought the girl completely goes unconscious. They have no answers immediately. So a lot of people are kind of like speculating and trying to come up with these solutions of why this man would turn up with this tiny girl who's like six years old and she's presumably dead and it kind of tells like a fairy tale so if you like a dark grand fairy tale I would say this story is for you because that's how it's kind of told I just yeah not I just yeah <laughs> sorry I just didn't connect with it <laughs> um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this one down and the next one I picked up, which I'm currently reading, is Boundary Side, which I was convinced to read by the booktuber Jessie May, and she said she loves, loves this story, so I picked it up, and wow, it starts off really, really quickly. So, I mean, you get going, like, bam, like, I'm thrown right into this world, right into this magic. I'm loving the girl. It kind of gives me that Throne of Glass vibe, the strong, badass woman character girl. And yeah, I'm, I, I just, I literally just heard it, so I don't have a lot to say about it, but of course I'm sure you've already heard about it, people rave about this one too, so yeah, I just picked it up, even Brandon, Brandon Sanderson said he liked this one, which is a super famous fantasy author, so yeah, this is what I'm currently reading, and then my 2, two BR, and then my TBR for the rest of the month are these two stories. Now, I haven't read anything by Alyssa Copa. Very interested. She says she, you'll love this one if you love Sorcery of Thorns. I do. And I have read two other books by Robin Hobb, and this is the third one in its series. So, like I said, this one's also pretty, pretty chunky. Yeah, loving the beginning. It's just one I read to relax. And yeah, loving Robin Hobb. I'm going to get to this, but probably finish Boundary Side first, and then I'll finish the Assassin's Quest, because I really want to start the next book in the, I believe it's called the Manship, the Manship series, the Manship Traders series. Yeah, I really, really want to get to those, because people said that's their favorite. So, gotta finish this one, Robin Hood, I gotta get to it. So, that wraps all the books I've read so far. I'm excited for this month. I hope I have... More favorites, like I did, loving this story and the snow child just touches my heart so much. I hope I like the other books just as much too. So I'll try and record more. It's harder for me too because I just get so burnt out after work. I I really, really want to keep up with my videos, but yeah, sometimes I just rather would read than record, or I'm just not in the mood to do either, because I'm so tired, but yeah, that's my goal, I'm going to try, try to do it once a week, we'll see, we'll see, but yeah, work gets a little strenuous, because I use my brain so much with my creativity and my design that I do for web development, but yeah, check out my next video, and I'll let you know how I feel about this book.